Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias. My name's Leif. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, of course, as all of you know, this is an immense privilege. So thank you to those of you who had some role in me getting here. Uh, I'm really happy. Um, up here I have uh, a different title than you'll see on our agenda, which is um, intentional. I think the agenda gives a, a more precise um, view of my project and some of my research, uh, but doesn't really capture the scope of uh, some of the issues I'm trying to look at. Um, so I think it's something like plant resistance, or plant resilience, plant community resilience after Volcan Chai Um But volcano ecology more broadly in southern Chile, and studies in post-corruption community resilience are what I'm looking at. And I really appreciate that I had um, you go for me, Catherine, uh, a, the, the multidisciplinary approach to trauma that you're taking, I think is really relevant to um, volcano ecology as a field. Um, and of course, that's a different kind of trauma, um, but um, relevant in terms of thinking about how human individuals and communities process um, those kinds of losses and pains. Um, I'd like to introduce myself a little more thoroughly before I begin. Um, I grew up in Washington State uh, in the shadow of Mount St. Helens, which as many of you know erupted in uh, 1980. Um, it was the, the biggest eruption um, in U.S. history um, in the continental U.S. and became, in the aftermath of that eruption, a site for leading disturbance ecology research. Um, I grew up in a small logging community that was kind of post-logging boom and environmental movement and was very depressed as a uh, result of the conflicts between um, the logging industry and also the mining industry and environmental activism in that area. Um, and my, my dad was a a land manager with the Forest Service at Mount St. Helens. Um, my mother was an environmental educator. And that, um, that upbringing really influenced uh, what I'm doing here. Um, I later went on to study plant, plant community ecology in Vermont and spent a year studying here, um, studying native forests in Chile at the University of Austral, um, and also studying volcano ecology there. After college, I um, worked in teen mental health uh, and environmental education, and um, recently entered a graduate program in religion and ecology at Yale University. Um, <coughs> and so I am also pulling from a lot of disciplines in this work um, and hoping to have a lot of fun. <laughs> um, so I'd like to just set um, mostly a broad context for what volcano ecology is um, and spend a, just a little bit of time on the, the nitty-gritty of what I'm doing. <coughs> so in May of 2008, Volcan Chaiten erupted. Chaiten is in Parque Pumalin, uh, which is a private conservation park in transition um, to um, uh, national management. Um, but in uh, Los Lagos Rio, Los Lagos region of southern Chile. Um, it was purchased by a big swath of land purchased by Douglas Tompkins, who is a um, American was. businessman. Was was an American businessman. He he died last year. Um, but this is a small town of Chaiten. Um, there was a town of about five thousand people, a small port town, in the shadow of that eruption. Um, when initially Chaiten began to erupt, that town was evacuated, um, and in the days following, a uh, secondary mudslide from that eruption came <coughs> through um, the town and buried it in meters of volcanic ash and debris, um, which cemented, filled the bay that was um, the access to the ocean and, and made the port town what it was. Um, and there's a, uh, there of course have been eight years of 
um, response to that since, uh, but the, the town of Chai Ten has reestablished and is regrowing. Um, in April of 2011, Volcan Gordon Gaoye erupted, um, which is also sometimes referred to as the Puyewe eruption. It's right next to a, a bigger volcano called Volcan Puyewe, and is in Puyewe National Park. Um, which is just into the mountains from Osorno in, uh, in the rivers region. And last year, no, two years ago, in 2015, um, Volcan Cal Calbuco, this is the city of Puerto Montt. Um, Volcan Calbuco is on um, mostly in Parque Nacional Yanquiwe. And uh, of course, this is. Uh, Eruption was very close to a lot of population centers, um, and as with the others, really dramatically affected both human communities and preserved forests. Um, so, what I like to look at is volcanism and community. How those uh, this process of volcanic activity and volcanic eruption is interacting with communities, both from a forest ecology perspective and from a human perspective, a sociological perspective, a, um, there are a lot of points of access into looking at commun human community. But, um, and again, this is a trauma event. This is a landscape scale trauma, eruptions. Um, of course, some people are more protected than others. Some um, individuals and kind of populations are more protected. But for the most part, um, it's pretty evenly distribu distributed and indiscriminate in the areas that it does affect. Um, and so it's, I think, a really exciting opportunity to look at the ways um, <coughs> that different people and different communities go through uh, a restoration process together, um, sometimes in parallel, sometimes in collaboration, um, sometimes in denial. Um, and there are kind of two ways I look at volcanism. Um, and its relationship with the community. The first is the effects of the eruption event itself and resistance. So who survived and in what condition did they survive? Um, who was killed or what was lost? And then response and resilience. What sort of uh, steps have been taken to deal with that event, um, to respond, to restore integrity and health to the community, to rebuild connections and access to resources, uh, or perhaps to leave. Um, so my background and perspective is in ecology that has a lot of different meanings to different people. If you ask your average academic or uh, uh, sur if you survey academics about how ecology is relevant to their work, you'll get a really wide variety of senses of what this word means. Um, but just as three broad, not mutually exclusive categories, um, basic ecology looks at uh, primarily a more than human um, ecosystem. Ecology is always concerned with systems, relationships, dynamics, um, interdependence. Uh, but basic ecology looks at the kind of beyond human, and, and for the, for me, and in this context of volcanism in southern Chile, that's a forest ecology perspective. Um, and that approach can be taken by science, which is sort of our uh, our paradigm, um, but can also be uh, come from a religious perspective, for example, a kind of cosmological uh, understanding of how how the world works. Then applied ecology, uh, which for us often means land management, conservation biology, forestry, um, restoration ecology. These are all fields that are concerned with um, taking an active role, uh, humans taking an active role in participating in ecosystems um, and promoting certain values that we've identified. And then human ecology which is looking at how, um, taking a step back from this applied ecology and looking at how humans are engaging with their environment, um, whether consciously or unconsciously. And, uh, and I'm going to try to 
have windows into all of these. Um, these are my broad objectives. Um, I have smaller projects within these that, again, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail on, um, but I'd be happy to talk about them with you later. Um, so first, to support and strengthen collaborative long-term ecological research in southern Chile's volcanoes. Um, when Chai Tan erupted the first of the three volcanoes I've been talking about, um, two forest ecology professors from the University of Austral contacted uh, forest ecologists at Mount St. Helens, um, and they immediately set up permanent plots at that volcano, um, and have continued to set up per permanent plots at Puerto Cauye and at Calbuco. Um, those permanent plots, of course, require permanent uh, maintenance and data collection, and so contributing to that is a big part of my research. I already spent most of January and February um, in the field of these volcanoes collecting plant ecology data. Um, and also, really importantly, this is a collaboration and a, an effort that is going to take, um, that needs to be long term beyond the scale of my involvement. Um, so, so building those human connections um, and human networks uh, through work with, with those two teams is really important to what I'm doing here. Um, to study and assist in plant community restoration efforts through field and greenhouse experiments. So this is looking forward to some applied ecology um, by seeing how, how plant communities are responding well and how they're responding not so well, um, what sort of um, efforts we can take that really effectively nurture these plant communities back to health. And, and then finally, to learn, and learn from and contribute to existing projects and human aspects of ecological restoration. So there are existing projects at all of these volcanoes, especially in Chaiten and Calbuco, that had um, acutely affected small communities. Um, and my next slide has my partners, but um, there are a, a variety of primarily education efforts um, that are taking place, but also um, emergency response planning and rural development uh, projects um, that I'm hoping to be intimately involved with. Uh, my partners, I mentioned uh, Mauro Gonzalez and Antonio Lara. Uh, they're the two forest ecology professors at the University of Austral. Charlie Cursafulli and Frederick Swanson are American ecologists who have done most of their work at Mount St. Helens and also at uh, the Andrews Experimental Forest in Oregon. Um, but they're affiliated with the Pacific Northwest Research Station, the U.S. Forest Service, and Oregon State University. Um, Pablo Salman and Barbara Corrales are uh, two Chileans who um, have a new con private conservation park in development on the slopes of Volcan Calbuco, um, which is called Parque Valle Los Ulmos. Um, they had established that park prior to the eruption um, and received the brunt of um, the Tefra fall from that event. Um, so they're sort of reeling in the wake of um, that 2015 eruption and really committing themselves to the project of a community restoration, the establishment of a volcanic park that um, serves much more than uh, the forest's needs, conservation needs, but also serves um, broader kind of rural development and educational goals. And then John Grimm and Mary Evelyn Tucker, who are my advisors at uh, Yale. Um, they're affiliated with the Yale Forum on Religion and Ecology. Um, and they'll be, um, they're my advisors, but they'll be helping me with some work with local churches. Um, I'm hoping to be involved uh, with Christian groups to see kind of what sort of narratives are being drawn about what the, the volcanoes mean in a theological sense. Um, that's all I got. Thank you guys. Any questions? We do have uh, some time. Thank you, Lee. We have uh, some time for questions. <laughs> so I probably missed this, but where did you say you're going to be in the lead phase? Ah, um, I didn't say that, and it's not entirely clear to me. But I would say in between Ensenada, which is where Parque Valle Los Unos is located. Yeah. Uh, Chai Ten, the town of Chai Ten, and also that volcano, and Valdivia, where the University of Australia is located. And 
And are those all in the south? Those are all in Los Rios y Los Lagos. Yeah. Um, I know Volcan Villarica mm -hmm. um, erupted like last May. Do you think of like ch checking that out in Fukong? Or? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm certainly hoping to connect to the whole network of volcanoes that uh, Chile has. Um, Pucón is on a, a much more frequent cycle of smaller scale eruptions. Um, and so those disturbance events aren't as widespread. Um, the community is, is sort of set aside just enough where they, they don't get um, really heavily impacted by the, those events. So it's yeah, not quite as exciting of a field site in Salzburg this time. Yeah. Um, I don't know much about volcanoes. So what are these uh, like parks like? Are they really just about the restoration of like the, the natural landscape? Uh, or are they like play, like that should be undisturbed? Or are they places that people visit to learn and stuff like that? Yeah, so there's a really wide diversity of philosophies that are behind um, land conservation in Chile. Um, and, and that's another topic I'd really like to learn more about. Um, for example, the, the difference between um, CONAF's agenda, um, the, the corporation that runs the national parks and national forests of Chile, and um, Douglas Tompkins and the Fundación Humalín, um, though they, ha they have really different kind of philosophical cores. Um, and, yeah, and have a wide variety of kind of the, the infrastructure they provide for people to visit and enter into their parks um, and to learn about them um, and the kind of management they're willing to entertain. So, not a very clear question, but there's a lot going on within your question. Are there any eruptions scientists predict for this year? Like, are there any active volcanic like, activity uh, right now? Um, volcanic eruption prediction. Uh, is <laughs> um, is very much a work in progress, and the, the straight answer is no. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Why did you choose Chile? Like, because I know there's like volcanoes also just on the border on the other side in Argentina. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just curious about that. Um, I ended up in Chile kind of by circumstance. Um, opportunities provided by my undergrad institution brought me here. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> And I guess the connections I made then brought me back. <laughs> I mean, I guess there's a question for anyone, but like, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just, I was just curious because I know that uh, it's sort of like, I mean, I was just at, uh, um, anyway, I, I just like mm -hmm. know that there's sort of a lot of activity. One way of answering that question is um, the one of the ways that um, forest ecology on Chilean volcanoes has been framed is, okay. as uh, okay. a comparison with Mount St. Helens. And Mount St. Helens being on the west side of the Cascade Range, um, receiving the you know, Pacific weather patterns and a lot of heavy rainfall in a temperate climate, um, the volcanoes on this side of the mountains are a better... That makes total sense. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I think that your, your connection between volcanology and religion is absolutely fascinating. I have never considered such a thing, mm -hmm. which I think is wonderful. I'm wondering, just because of what I work on, I'm wondering if you've delved at all into like some of the philosophical issues of trauma and maybe even like mythology mm. surrounding volcanoes or any of that. I mean, I'd love to talk to you about <laughs> this more because I think it's absolutely intriguing. But have you considered in incorporating any of like the philosophical ramifications of your work into like, your larger project? Or is that something totally would, off your radar? Um, I, would, I would love to. Um, and I, I have considered that that is not my background. And so if you have any um, sort of I'll send you a bit of the <laughs> That would be so wonderful. Um, I think it's but in terms of like mythological and religious narratives about mm -hmm. volcanoes, there is a lot there. Yes. I mean, in terms of a dynamic feature of the landscape, mm -hmm. um, that's really powerful and something we need to make sense of. Right. And we, you know, we don't have, Just <laughs> we have a very low capacity to kind of um, empathize with a, a volcano that we're in relationship with in mm -hmm. the same kind of way we have uh, not a whole lot of capacity to understand God 
and right. gods. Um, and also the volcanic disturbance, you know, what we see in these volcano or in these plant ecology um, plots, these long term plots, is a rising from the ashes. I mean, it's a, a phoenix in action. Um, and so it's a really, you know, beautiful and powerful example of our, our capacity for resilience. Right. I think there's a lot of very powerful metaphors that you could definitely use in your work there. So I just wanted to make sure you might consider that. I think it's a very fertile ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's one. Thank you so much. <laughs>